Let's take a look at this problem. So there's a piano that's been pushed to the top of a ramp, and then it's going to roll back down the ramp. So clearly this is an object on a ramp problem. And we're told two things about the ramp. First off, we're told that the top of the ramp is one meter above the ground, and we're told that it's tipped at a 20 degree angle. What we're trying to compute is the time that it's going to take for the piano to roll from the top of the ramp to the bottom of the ramp. And it's rolling, we'll presume, on wheels, and so it's basically moving frictionlessly down the ramp. So this is an object on a ramp problem. And to set it up, let's do a couple things to prepare. First off, we'll do this. We're going to specify the ramp. Now we're told that the ramp top is one meter above the ground. So this distance here is 1.0 meters. We're also told that the ramp is at a 20 degree angle. What we really need to know is this length right here. How long is the ramp? This is the distance that the piano is going to roll. Well, we know some trig functions. We know the sine of 20 degrees is the opposite side of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse. So sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite side of the triangle, one meter divided by the hypotenuse, L, which is what we're looking for. So we can rewrite it this way. L is equal to 1.0 meters divided by the sine of 20 degrees. And if we work that out, we get a distance of 2.93 meters. Now notice this is a two significant figure problem, but we've kept three significant figures because this is an intermediate stage of the calculation. That's one piece we need. Now, the other thing we need to know is this. When the piano is on the ramp, there's an acceleration moving down the ramp. We know that that's true. The, the, the piano is going to slide down. But what is that acceleration? Well, if we have something on a ramp and the angle is 20 degrees, the acceleration is just equal to g times the sine of 20 degrees. That's our basic relationship for objects sliding down a ramp. And since we've drawn it moving to the right, we have the positive sign here. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. We can look up the sine of 20 degrees. We can solve for this. And so what we get is this. The acceleration is 3.35 meters per second squared. Again, we've kept an extra significant figure because this is an intermediate stage of the calculation. Now let's start doing some assessment. Okay, the object has to slide 2.93 meters, and the acceleration is 3.35 meters per second squared. So I don't expect it to take very long to get from here to here. This is about one-third of the acceleration of gravity. This distance is about 10 feet, okay? So I'm expecting the piano to get from here to here very, very quickly. I think by the time they notice it, it's going to be too late. But we can find out. And the way we'll solve this problem is this. We're going to set up a pictorial representation. The piano starts here at the top of the ramp. It finishes at the bottom of the ramp. And what we want to know is, what is the time interval? How long does it take to get from its initial position to its final position? In between the top of the ramp and the bottom of the ramp, it's accelerating with an acceleration of 3.35 meters per second squared. The initial position, I'm going to call zero meters. And I'm setting this up as the x-axis. The x-axis moves along the ramp, as we do in this sort of problem. So the initial position is 0 meters. The final position is 2.93 meters. That's what we calculated right here. The initial speed is 0 meters per second. And the final speed, we don't know. And in that effect, we don't need to know. We're not interested in that particular piece of the puzzle. So we have a pictorial representation. We have the acceleration. We have the initial position, the initial speed, we have the final position, we're looking for time, and to do that, we use the basic relationship for one-dimensional motion that looks like this. The final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times the time interval plus one-half times the acceleration times the time interval squared. Now take a look at this relationship because there's a bunch of pieces which simplify. The initial position is zero meters, and so this term goes out of the equation. The initial speed is zero meters per second, and so this term goes out of the equation. And so our relationship reduces to this. The final position is equal to one-half times the acceleration times the time interval squared. This is great because what we're looking for is the time interval. We know the acceleration. We know the final position. The final position is 2.93 meters. The acceleration is 3.35 meters per second squared. And so we can solve 
for the time interval. And if we rearrange this equation and solve for the time interval, what we get is this. The time interval is 1.32 seconds, rounding to two significant figures because it's a two significant figure problem. We get 1.3 seconds. Now let's do a quick assessment. At the start of the problem, we said, look, the piano is only moving about 10 feet. And the acceleration is about one third of the acceleration of gravity. We don't expect it to take very long to get to the bottom of the ramp. In fact, that's exactly what we find. And so our assessment is that the problem, in fact, matches our understanding of the way the world works.